Polycythemia vera is a specific but it's a rare disorder. If the WBC, which is your white blood cell count, is abnormally high or low, it could be liver disorders or thyroid problems and some other conditions. Hello everyone, today we are talking about CBC, complete blood count. You're gonna be able to understand what is going on in your blood work. You all want to know, right? Well, I'll tell you things that your doctor may not tell you. I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin, I'm an endocrinologist, and today I'm going to explain how to read CBC, complete blood count. Well, CBC can assess your overall health and detect infections like anemia, leukemia, etc. The blood cells are created and matured in the bone marrow, and they're released into the bloodstream as needed. Now, CBC assesses three cell types that are red blood cells. Number one is the erythrocytes that are made in the bone marrow and then they are discharged into the bloodstream. They have hemoglobin. This is also reported in there, a protein that carries the oxygen. A red blood cell has a lifetime of 120 days, so the bone marrow must constantly manufacture that red blood cells to replace those that age and degrade or bleed out to death. Aside from the illnesses that cause severe bleeding, many conditions can actually impact the creation of these red blood cells or their longevity. Well, red blood cells are generally homogeneous in size and shape. But for example, deficits in B12, especially if you're a metformin, folate, iron can alter the appearance of that red blood cell. Anemia, reduced red blood cell counts, and hemoglobin is a frequent disorder affecting the red blood cells. Anemia, for example, can be caused by several disorders, and extra testing is sometimes required if your hemoglobin or red blood cell count is low. So hemoglobin, hematocrit, these are all similar things that we will talk about. The next thing I want to quickly touch base is the white blood cells. They are commonly known as leukocytes. They're found in the blood, in the lymphatic system, and the tissues. What they do is they help in infection resistance. They prevent the inflammation. They try to take care of allergy problems. Now, some have unique functions. Neutrophils, lymphocytes, basophils, eosinophils, and monocytes. There are some examples of these white blood cells that you will see in your CBC, and you'll try to figure out, which I will go over in a second. And depending on body's condition, these numbers can fluctuate. So don't panic if your numbers are a little bit higher or a little bit lower every time, because white blood cells are especially very dynamic. For example, a bacterial infection can cause your bone marrow to create a lot of neutrophils. For example, allergies may cause increase in the eosinophils. A viral infection, for example, can make a lot of lymphocytes. In leukemia, for example, you will see a lot of immature and mature kind of mix of white blood cells. They can grow rapidly. So platelets is the next thing. Platelets, I would say we call them also thrombocytes. They're microscopic blood cell fragments required for normal blood coagulation. So platelets actually assist in stopping the bleeding by sticking to the wound and clumping together to form a temporary stopper. They also create a lot of chemical signals that attract and clump other platelets and they eventually form a stable blood clot at the location of that lesion that is trying to heal. Well, there are several automated instruments that can actually perform CBC. These instruments measure a lot of data. That includes the cell count. They look at the physical characteristics of certain cells. And we will have a list of items in CBC right now for you. So what are red blood cell tests, for example? The amount of red blood cell is in your blood sample is determined by doing a red blood cell count. These are oxygen carrying protein hemoglobin is measured by the total amount of hemoglobin in the blood, in the red blood cell, which in turn indicates the number of red blood cells as well. So when it comes to red blood cell count though, hematocrit counts the percentage of your entire volume of your blood as red blood cells. Examples of low red blood cell or hemoglobin or hematocrit are gonna be anemia, it could be acute or chronic bleeding causing anemia. It could be red blood cell destruction, for example, hemolytic anemia or nutritional deficiencies such as iron deficiency, B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, and so forth. And bone marrow disorders can lead to uh, anemia as well. And some chronic inflammatory disorders such as chronic kidney disease 
can also cause anemia, causing low hemoglobin or hematocrit, etc. What about the high levels? Well, there's something called polycythemia. Dehydration can do that. The lung diseases can do that. Or kidney problems, occasionally kidney tumors can do that. They sometimes produce excess erythropoietin. Smoking, living in high altitude, or even some genetic causes can cause elevated hemoglobin in your blood. Polycythemia vera is a specific, but it's a rare disorder. And that is something that you can discuss with your doctor if you think you have a high risk. Another thing you're gonna see is MCV, which is mean corpuscular volume in your CBC. It's a measure of average cell volume of your red blood cells. And because your blood cells contain an average quantity of hemoglobin called, we call this mean corpuscular hemoglobin. And the average concentration of hemoglobin in your red blood cell is known as the mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. If you have a low MCV, that can indicate that red blood cells are smaller than normal. We call that microacidic. This can be caused by iron deficiency anemia or thalassemias. And a high MCV could be due to B12 deficiency, folate deficiency, myelodysplasia, a bone marrow disorder. It could be liver disorders or thyroid problems and some other conditions, which indicates that your red blood cells are larger than normal. We call that macrocytic. So mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration may be also low when MCV is low and decreased mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is seen again in iron deficiency anemia and thalassemia. Increased MCHC or mean corpuscular hemoglobin values can be seen in conditions where hemoglobin is more concentrated inside the red blood cells. This could be autoimmune hemolytic anemia, sometimes in burn patients. There's something called hereditary spherocytosis, which is a rare genetic disorder that can all cause that. When it comes to red blood cells, there's something called red cell distribution width, which I get a lot of questions about, which is a measurement of the diversity in the cell size. So red cell distribution width is high. It may mean that like it may be a lot of small and large red blood cells present. Some of them are juvenile, some of them are very old, etc. For example, in patients with iron deficiency anemia and pernicious anemia, there is a significant degree of variation in the red blood cell size, which we call that anisocytosis. In addition to that, sometimes CBC may include reticulocyte count, which is a count or percentage of newly released young red blood cells in your blood sample. Testing for white blood cell count is important. Counting the total number of the white blood cell in a blood sample is known as WBC count. If the WBC, which is your white blood cell count, is abnormally high or low, we sometimes do a differential. And as part of that CBC differential, if there's problems in the white blood cells. So there are five types of cells are counted, and these are neutrophils the lymphocytes, the monocytes, the eosinophils, and basophils, as um, we discussed earlier. The individual count can be provided as an absolute count, or they can sometimes give you as a percentage of the overall count. If your white blood cell is low, that's considered leukopenia, and some causes are bone marrow disorders, or damage to your immune system, or severe infections such as sepsis, lymphoma, or other cancers that spread to your bone marrow can do that. Sometimes even dietary deficiencies or HIV or AIDS type of immune disorders can do that as well. If your white blood cell is high, this is considered leukocytosis, and most common causes are infection, either bacterial or viral. It could be due to inflammation in your body, leukemia, myeloproliferative disorders, such as excessive proliferation in your bone marrow, trauma, burn, heart attack, intense exercise, severe stress, all can increase your white blood cells. When it comes to neutrophils, and if they are low, we call this neutropenia. The severe overwhelming infections, for, stuff, for example, sometimes the sepsis can do that, autoimmune disorders can do that, the dietary deficiencies or reaction to medications, HIV, and some other bone marrow disorders can do that as well. So specifically the neutrophil count can be low after chemotherapy, radiotherapy, and so forth, especially if cancer spreads to your bone marrow. If neutrophils are high, we call this neutrophilia. Some causes are 
severe bacterial infections uh, or inflammation, trauma, heart attack, burns, stress, rigorous exercise if you're not used to it, certain leukemias, for example, CML, chronic myeloid leukemia, or even Cushing syndrome can cause that. What about the lymphocyte counts? Well, the some of the causes for low lymphocytes, we call this uh, lymphocytopenia, it could be autoimmune disorders such as lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. It could be infections such as HIV or viral hepatitis. It could be influenza, COVID-19, and you name it. Bone marrow damage can do that. Chemotherapy, radiotherapy, corticosteroids all can do that. If lymphocytes are high, this is called lymphocytosis. And some causes will be acute viral infections such as chickenpox, CMV, Epstein-Barr, herpes, rubella, etc. Some bacterial infections typically do that as well such as whooping cough, tuberculosis, toxoplasmosis, and chronic inflammatory conditions such as ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, and so forth. Lymphoma will definitely do that. As stress can occasionally, especially acute stress. And then the eosinophils are next, guys. The eosinophils can be high, especially in asthma, the allergies, hay fever. Drug reactions do that. Parasitic infections can increase your eosinophil counts. Sometimes celiac disease, inflammatory bowel disease can do that. Some cancers trigger high eosinophil count. Certain acute or chronic leukemias or lymphoma Thomas, uh, sometimes Addison's disease, connective tissue disorders, and so forth. Now, how about platelets? Let, let's get into the platelets. Now, if it is low, we call this thrombocytopenia. Sometimes viral infections such as mono or mononucleosis, measles, hepatitis, stuff like that can do that. Now, sometimes the allergic reactions to even to acetaminophen or sulfa drugs can do it. Cirrhosis can do it, autoimmune disorders such as ITP can do it, sepsis, leukemia, lymphoma, chemo and radiotherapy can all cause that. But if your platelets are high, we call this thrombocytosis. Again, this can happen with uh, lung cancer, gastrointestinal cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer and lymphoma. Rheumatoid arthritis can do that, inflammatory bowel disease, lupus, iron deficiency anemia, hemolytic anemia and so forth. Now, let's talk about the MPV. If the mean platelet volume is low, that indicates that the average platelet size is low. And that can mean that a condition is affecting the production of platelets by the bone marrow. Well, if the MPV is high, that indicates a high number of larger and younger platelets are in the blood. Well, this may be due to bone marrow producing and releasing platelets rapidly into the circulation. For example, myeloproliferative disorders, such as essential thrombocytemia, one or more diseases or disorders may be present at the same time. If the CBC results fall beyond the predefined reference intervals though, you will still need to have a good conversation with your doctor and do not try to interpret your own results. I am trying to give you a general idea about how to understand your results and sometimes your doctors will actually send this blood sample for a smear for under microscope examination for more detailed examination to understand further because CBC is overall a general test to give an idea to the healthcare provider, to the physician. They can utilize uh, this information to understand the root cause of the abnormal CBC findings and most of the time more tests are necessary. When your platelets are low, your risk of excessive bleeding will be high and when your platelets are high, your risk of clotting will be high. So guys, I hope uh, this gave you some idea about how to look at your CBC and we will talk more about other blood testing for you. If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. We may not give personal information, but I can answer some of the questions that you may have that is not necessarily pertinent directly to you. Uh, well, thank you very much and we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this channel so far and I hope you subscribed already. If you didn't, do it. And if you did, watch this video right there. I think that will help you too.